Okay, this sermon is entitled, Jehovah's False Witnesses and Their Stupid Beliefs. I'd like to open up with prayer. And then with a few verses, all right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Blessed listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 17 reads, Hear the right, O Lord, attend unto my cry. Give ear unto my prayer that goeth not out of feigned lips. Let my sentence come forth from thy presence. Let thine eyes behold the things that are equal. Thou hast proved mine heart. Thou hast visited me in the night. Thou hast tried me and shalt find nothing. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. Now, obviously, the Jehovah's false witnesses is a false version of Christianity. It's nothing more than a cult founded by man. Charles Taze Russell in 1870. It wasn't practically implemented until about 1876. And the Jehovah's False Witnesses do not use the King James Bible. They use the New World Translation, which is a bunch of garbage. And they have a lot of errant and erroneous beliefs. And everything about Jehovah's False Witnesses is unorthodox or heterodox and heretical. So I'd like to go into my notes and just expound about what they believe. Number one, they're non-Trinitarians. They're akin to the Pentecostal oneness group, these modalists, who deny the Trinity. Number two, they believe that the Holy Spirit is impersonal, whereas the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is our comforter, who will guide us into all truth. Number three, they believe that Jesus Christ is not co-equal with God. Turn over to John chapter 10. Now the Bible makes it very clear in verse 30 that Jesus Christ is co-equal with the Father. It reads, I and my Father are one. So the Jehovah's false witnesses are blatantly denying the scriptures. They also believe that Jesus Christ was created by God. And this is an Arian belief as well as the non-Trinitarian doctrine. The next thing about Jehovah's false witnesses is that they do fruitless soul winning. They knock on your door with nothing to say. And they ask stupid questions like, do you know what the will of the Father is? And it's a bunch of madness. I don't even know what the point of it is. They're not doing any soul winning. They're not even doing fallacious soul winning, as far as I know. They're just coming to your door with a bunch of vague stupidity. Number five, they believe there's no hell. Number six on my list, they don't believe in holidays. Now, I've actually talked to some Jehovah's Witnesses before. And they say they don't celebrate birthdays because they don't believe that man is worthy to have a day celebrated in his honor. And then finally, I'd like to deal with salvation. When it comes to the Jehovah's False Witnesses doctrine, they are completely wrong on salvation. According to the official website, they say that you have to follow Jesus in order to be saved. That is a total works-based salvation. Now, the Jehovah's False Witnesses also believe in repent of your sins, Roy's. And it's no wonder because all false prophets adhere to this. All false prophets teach a works-based salvation, and Roy's is a very clever and convenient way to teach works salvation. So, the Jehovah's False Witnesses are unsaved. It's nothing but a cult. And the final thing on my list is they reject eternal security. And this is what makes them a damnable cult. Turn over to John chapter 11. This is not a side issue. This is not a secondary or tertiary issue. This is a crucial issue. In John chapter 11, let's take a look at verses 24 to 27. Jesus Christ makes it very clear that you have to believe in eternal security or you don't even believe that he's the Christ or the Son of God or the one who is sent into the world. It reads... Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. Now, if eternal security were not that important, or if it's part of your walk, or if it's something you can learn later, then why did Jesus make it part of you know, what you need to believe in order to affirm that he is the Son of God, 
the Christ, and the one who was sent. You have to believe that whosoever liveth and believeth in him will never die. You'll never go to hell. You're eternally secure. So the reason why I believe this is so important is because why would the Jehovah's false witnesses deny such a teaching if it's a secondary issue? See, Satan doesn't care about your walk. And Satan has to make sure people are going to hell according to this false teaching. So that's why he makes sure that they deny eternal security. I've talked to Jehovah's Witnesses at the door. They flat out reject it. They say, we don't believe in once saved, always saved. My response to them was, you're not saved. It's that simple. So these people are nothing but a bunch of false prophets with a false soteriological and theological system that leads people straight to hell. They need to be marked and avoided and exposed at all costs. That's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.